Good morning, everyone. This is Jay. I'm working for Naver in Korea. It's good morning. I'm Tang Qing, also working for Naver in China. Uh, so today we will uh, talk about Elastic Search Index Management for uh, Pass Style Logging System. Uh, first, I'll briefly introduce Nello and uh, how we use Elasticsearch in Nello and some problem of first design and then uh, how we resolve that issues in the second page and some uh, index manager details design. Uh, so Nello is an uh, in-house logging system in neighbor for neighbor developers. And uh, so we provide some SDKs to forward logs and collecting logs through some various protocols. And uh, we provide a lot in real time and scheduled way. So some users, if they um, register a lot, if some rules of a lot uh, meet, then we send some notification. And we also provide kind of uh, crash log de-symbolication and the of uh, obfuscating. Uh, that means, uh, for example, in mobile application, uh, sometimes uh, application crashes, then it generates crash log. Basically, that crash log is not human readable. So in our backend, uh, some, for example, if user register their binary and some, when there is some crash log uh, uh, some generated in application, then uh, application forward to some our system through our SDK, then in our system we uh, some transform that not human readable uh, some r crash log to human readable format. And we developed own web application uh, and we provide dashboard, just keep on a dashboard. And some case user want to customize their uh, some logs stored in Nello, so we provide open API to uh, make uh, some data available to those kind of users. Uh, we have uh, two some main design considerations. First one is uh, we need to support various uh, log formats. Uh, in Neighbor, we support uh, some, we provide many applications and uh, those applications are developed based on uh, some various platforms such as Android and iOS and Mac OS X Windows and some depending on application, they also uh, some use some framework to send logs. So depending on platform or framework, some, some, there are some common part or some different part of log format. Uh, we need to cover those cases. And uh, also, meanwhile, some application, they also want to define some own some custom for some field. So, Basically, we have some uh, inside of our companies and some our some client who want to uh, some provide some their own uh, log form format. So we need to cover. Um, this is a uh, current our scale of last search. We uh, have uh, 490 some node and. 11 clusters in some nine instances, and uh, total number of logs uh, 7.6 terabyte, and total size of logs are currently 1.6 petabyte. Uh, at the beginning of our product, uh, we just start from training data node of Elasticsearch, and uh, we just have some half billion logs. So. We, our some product itself is keep growing, so we need to uh, concern about scalability. 
So this is our overall architecture. Uh, so uh, in client side, we support uh, many different kind of SDK, including some uh, open source logging agent. So client application sends a log to our collector. And in collector size, if uh, some incoming logs are growing, then we can easily uh, add some collector and some uh, add some register, some collector address to the L4, then it, it's very easy to scale out. And uh, most of data stored in Kafka, and some depending on some uh, log type and event, we uh, define some, uh, some different topics. And in the back end, depending on the uh, topic, we process. And most of some back end processing uh, we implemented on top of Storm. And uh, crash collector is aggregate some uh, crash data and store to Elasticsearch. And uh, so most of the logs uh, lead from uh, Kafka and some, some index through some Storm topology. And for alerting, we use populator feature and symbol locator I already explained to you, but implemented it on top of Storm. Uh, previously, we used uh, different types of uh, different kind of framework, but to, for maintainability, we unified to use uh, Storm. And some, most of our features are available, and feature and uh, some data is available through open API and users uh, basically interact through our web application. And today I'll mainly some talk about Elasticsearch. So in first phase, this is uh, our uh, Elasticsearch cluster architecture. Uh, we had uh, three dedicated master nodes and some client node, some so uh, some most of uh, some search requests or indexing requests always uh, uh, some going through some coordinating nodes to the data node. And uh, some we use uh, some kind of uh, hot worm architecture. So uh, using some SSD machine, we uh, serve some hot data and some through some uh, HDD machine, we some serve some warm data. I think it's a kind of popular architecture. And for index model, uh, at the beginning, we defined some one index for one day. So uh, every data for one day means all some project data stored in one index, and uh, some each project we define some different mapping, and to support uh, retention time, basically some all project have in this uh, structure, uh, all project have some same retention time because they are sharing some index. So uh, if there is some uh, uh, some requirement, for example, some uh, some organization want to keep some data for two years or five years, then we split it uh, instances. And how we some search or in index and to optimize search performance, we use a uh, custom routing. Uh, so for example, for small project, we like to store some data only one shard, but for big project to parallelize processing, we uh, store some data to all shard in the index. So for example, here, uh, that some two, actually this uh, decide whether the project is small or big, at the moment, we just use some uh, static value, uh, some 50 million some logs per day. 
if some uh, project have that much of size, then we some consider it as big project. Some other some uh, project have a lower value, then we consider it as a small project. So here's a line application is a big project. So let's say it's a, uh, more than 50 million data is coming every day. Then we store some data to all shards and for uh, music and uh, some map application, we store only to the one specific shard. But uh, in this model, there are many some problems. First problem was a so-called mapping explosion. More project created, that means more mapping created, created as well. So for example, so in neighbor instance, we have more than 3,000 projects. That means every day 3,000 uh, mapping defined in one index. Size was uh, more than six megabyte. Basically, you know, Elasticsearch synchronized the mapping of an index among all nodes with single thread. So that means some size of mapping increase and number of uh, nodes increase, then some takes more time to update mapping. So uh, sometimes uh, entire cluster blocked by this uh, mapping, update mapping event. So for example, this was a uh, kind of log. So some, uh, some update to mapping took some more than uh, five minutes. So if you see, this is the graph of uh, indexing throughput. So uh, if you see some red arrow, uh, every some, some moment, some kind of some uh, indexing throughput dropped because of that uh, some update mapping event. And another problem is uh, imbalance of shard size. Because we are using the routing, custom routing, so uh, you know, Elasticsearch uh, decide the shard based on hash value of that routing value. So if some project have the same uh, some hash value, then some those projects stored in same uh, shard, that means sometimes some shard bigger than other uh, shard, and it means uh, that shard is bigger than others. So in this graph, uh, this is uh, came from real data. Uh, actually, another problem is uh, shard size itself quite big. So here's uh, most of shard size is uh, around uh, between 40 to 60, but some shard is more than 100 gigabytes. So yeah, it can affect some entire some, uh, cluster performance. And uh, another thing is uh, impact of a uh, big project. So basically some among more than 3,000 projects, less than 10% of projects uh, some configured as big size of big, big project and they uh, send, but they are sending more than 80% of logs. So you know some, because uh, they are stored in same index, some, some, some of the shards are shared together. So that means some sharing resources together. So affecting some performance of remaining some 90% uh, of small project. And another one is, uh, uh, as our pro product itself is uh, keep growing, uh, some organization keep asking us to uh, some kind of custom detention like one or two years or sometimes almost forever they want to keep data. Uh, in this case, basically we don't support within some one, some Elasticsearch clusters and uh, some 
handle different uh, retention time in our structure. So uh, at the moment, we need to split instance means different Elasticsearch cluster. And I mean some, some different, some entire narrow. So uh, it means we uh, need to some give some more some maintainability cost because we need more some, uh, some node and we need to maintain more servers. And another uh, problem is uh, at the beginning only we support string type, but uh, you know in dashboard to aggregate data, numeric data have more valuable to uh, some show some many different kind of aggregation result. But you know from Elasticsearch 2.x, uh, even if some some mapping is different, but if some uh, mapping some this resides in within one, I mean same index, then if field name is same, type also should be same. So, uh, for example, let's say I want to use some uh, size field, but uh, size field with some integer some type, but uh, other projects already some defined their size field as string, then there can be some type conflict. So here question is to define new some design, do we need to create separate index for every project? In that case, we have 3,000 projects means we need to define 3,000 indices every day, means at least 3,000 shards per day created. So uh, if, some, if there are two replicas, that means 10,000 shards every day created. So it's not scalable. To resolve this uh, problem, we improved our architecture. And we have several some instances, but uh, there are some, some big instances, especially neighbor and line instance. So for those instances, we split this, uh, some cluster to keep some, uh, some metadata of cluster smaller. And uh, we split it indices per day. Previously, we defined only one index, but uh, we defined multiple some indices, but some none like some some defined indexes for every project. Uh, with uh, by splitting some indices, we so we can support some custom type and retention custom retention time. And uh, previously, we only sp some use some uh, some statically some specify some uh, shard number, but uh, in in new model, we some dyna dynamically estimate some uh, number of shard, some by some history of some log size. So we keep optimized the number of shard in cluster. So, uh, in terms of Elasticsearch cluster architecture, uh, we introduced a Trime node. You know, Trime node, with Trime node, you can search with, for some multi-cluster. So, what I mean by that is, uh, uh, even if some data is uh, stored in different shards, with Trime node, you can search together. And, uh, but there is some limitation of a Trime node. You cannot update some metadata. So uh, from uh, 6.x, Elasticsearch uh, officially some support cross-cluster search. So if you use some recent version, you can use cross-cluster search. 
And uh, in previous model, we just have one uh, cluster even for hot tier and warm tier. We just use some command to move data from hot to uh, warm. But we split it cluster, so we, in our case, we use uh, HDFS uh, snapshot. So uh, when we move some data, we first uh, some store snapshot from the hot cluster and restore to some warm cluster. And uh, for index model, we separate indices uh, two different kind. Uh, for small project, still we store some common indices, means one index for one day, because 90% of some project still stored in uh, one index. But for big project, we stored in uh, dedicated indices. So we, uh, so why this way? Because uh, we try to some optimize number number of shards. So in this example, uh, some big project like band or neighbor app or line, they uh, some some have some dedicated indices, but others have some uh, share some uh, common index. In this model, uh, to search an index. Uh, is uh, more simplified because we you start using alias here. So uh, previously, for search and index, uh, some we need to aware about whether the project is big or small because for big project we don't specify routing and just use default routing. But for sm small project, we need to specify some routing value. But here, some, some for indexing, searching, don't need to care about it. Just use, uh, just need to aware about some alias name. Alias name null is uh, project name and some date of uh, log. And for indexing name, uh, for dedicated uh, project, we uh, give some post pics some project name. So uh, application only care about alias, but uh, within alias, it just uh, knows and points to a specific some L, uh, index or specific shard with uh, routing. This kind of job is done by uh, index manager. So Tang Chin, can you introduce about index okay. manager? Thanks, Jay. Okay, next uh, I will describe the detail of how we manage in our new index model. Uh, the component which is used to perform the management work is called the index manager. What is index manager? It is responsible for managing the life circle of all indices and indices. Every day it should uh, pre-create all the indices and the indices for all projects. And it needed to delete all expired indices and the indices every day. Besides of this, as we have multiple clusters, so it should be responsible for transfer indices is among these hot tire clusters according to their index retention time. Besides all of these scheduled tasks, Index Manager also handles some instant project management event. As this event, they may bring some changes to our existing index, such as a create project and a delete project. So this is the modules and the tasks of Index Manager. Inside the Index Manager, some tasks they just needed to be scheduled once every day, but others they needed to be scheduled every time there is a real-time management event comes. For scheduled tasks, they are responsible for maintaining the existing projects, indices, and indices. There are four kinds of scheduled tasks. 
First is the is the creatine index and anions drop. In this drop, it is responsible for creating the all projects indices and indices of tomorrow. And it also needed to transfer the all indexes from one cluster to another cluster. In the backup drop, they needed to create index snapshot in HDFS, and this is for use for fill over backup. And in the clean up drop, index manager should be responsible for removing all the expired indices and indices according to the retention time. So here is the scheduled task. Uh, another kind of task is real-time task. There are four kinds of real-time task. First, when the user creates a project through the web app, then the create project handler, it should add the project's owners to the existing index. Then when a delete project event comes, delete project handler should delete the project's dedicated index or the owners from a common index. Besides, it needs to delete all the history data of this project. As delete project data is a time-consuming pro pro um, process, so it will do it in a synchronous way. Another event is customized project mappings. Every time when this task receives the event, it will read the project mappings from a, a we call the customized meter indexes, then we build the project mappings and update the index. And for the split project event, the handler needs to create a dedicated index for this project and remove the owners and the mappings from the common index. Here is an architecture view of the index manager. As index manager, manages all the indexes of Lelo system, so we won't allow any downtime. Instead of deploy it on single load, we deploy it into the index manager cluster. In this cluster, we have one master and several slaves, and each node is collected to the rule keeper. Once the master is done, remaining slaves will elect a new master and continue to perform the management work. Mm. As we described in previous page, the index manager's managing work can be triggered in two ways. A first is the scheduled task. It will be triggered by the timer every day. And uh, once the timer is triggered, triggered different tasks, they will perform in the management work differently. For example, for the pre-create job, it first it will create all the projects, owners and mappings in the hot cluster, and the owners. And uh, uh, for the transfer job, it leads to transfer the indexes from the hot cluster and to own cluster, and we use HDFs as its storage media. And for the clean up job, it needs to remove all expired indices and indices from all of these clusters. And for the backup job, it also needed to create snapshots of every indices in HDFS. Here is the scheduled task. Another trigger way is the real-time event. Every time there is a real-time event from the web app, then the real-time handler fetches the event from the Kafka and handled differently. Maybe created a dedicated index or add owners to the common index or update the project's mappings, like that. After talking about these tasks, let's come to see the index manager config. As Jake already Mm, 
describe the previous thing. Uh, we have seven instances. Each instance, their scale is different. Their hardware may be also different. And uh, so, and uh, for example, we need a different configuration for the short number, uh, not a short number, the short size. So, and we also need to define different retention days. So this is uh, some dynamic parameters we can configure them in the index manager config. Besides, for all of the tasks, um, you can see we interact with many, many components like Rookeeper, ES, and HDVS. Any task can be failed during the uh, executing of the transaction. So when, if the transaction is failed, and uh, when index manager is recovers and this work may be um, changed from, from the old master to a new elected master. So how we do? How we know we recover from where? So we record the index manager's runtime information in an index called index manager meter. Uh, this is also another index which is used to uh, store the project's uh, customized mappings. Okay, uh, next uh, I will introduce how we perform some important uh, tasks. First is uh, the creating index and annuals is. We already know how our new index model is. But before we create the tomorrow's index, I think there are several problems we need to solve. First is, in our new index model, we allocate the big project in dedicated index and the small project in common index. Then the problem is, what kind of project is big and what kind of project is small? Can we decide it dynamically and not only use a static number? And another problem is, for an uh, index, previously we use a uh, static short number, but currently can we determine it dynamically every day? And what is the proper short number? And if the short number is too big, then it will overload the, the cluster. And if it's too small, it will bring down our performance. Another problem is for the annuals in common index, which annuals should have a routine and which annuals should have lot of routine? How we decide, how we decide it dynamically? Maybe come here, you already know, we needed to estimate the size. We needed to estimate the project size and the index size. Then compare with some threshold, then we determine it dynamically. Here is how we could do it. First, we estimate the project size using the average of the last seven days log volume. Then, uh, based on this project size, we compare it with a split size threshold. Then we determine whether this project is allocated in common or dedicated index. It's, if its size is smaller than the threshold, then it should be in common index. But if it's bigger than that, then it should be in dedicated index. Then, for, then we have multiple indices every day. For each index, we need to decide the short number, the annuals is, and its mappings. For the short number, as we already know the project size in this index, so we can get the index size simply by sum of the project size and the sharp number we just estimated using the number of index size divided the short size threshold. And for the analysis in the common index, we also use the project size to compare with the routine size the threshold, then we determine whether we routine or not. Um, so currently we only add these thresholds config in our config file. So maybe in the future we can determine it 
dynamically using some tool and run it in our production environment, then we can get this value automatically. Uh, this is how we transfer in indexes. Um, in our new model, for some very big instance, they have two clusters. For each cluster, they have different retention dates of index. So, this uh, retention dates is configured in the index manager config file. Besides all this, every time the transferring job works, it will record the last transferred index of each cluster. Then, next time it runs from these two kinds of information, it loads on each cluster which indices we need to move. Then for each index, we just create a snapshot in HDFS and store the index from this snapshot in the target cluster, then we delete a snapshot and the indexes in source cluster. After that, we update the metadata. Here is how we do backup. Uh, the backup task is uh, almost the uh, same with uh, the transferring job. It also uses uh, HDFS as its storage media. And every day, uh, the backup job executes, it uh, will find which, which indexes we should create a snapshot. As every time we record the last snapshot date in the index manager meter, so we know where to start. Then we know from the start date to yesterday, we all need to create indices. And for everyone, we create a snapshot and update the meter date. Uh, this is how we remove in the indices and annuals is. Um, as Jake already said, we have many projects, 3,001 instance, and every project, they have different retention time. So we need to clean this project data differently according to the retention time. And in index manager meter, we also stored each project's last deleted annuals or indexes. So from these two kinds of information, we can find for each project which index or annuals we need to remove. Then for for the project's annuals in the common index, uh, we just uh, remove the annuals, but we didn't uh, remove the data. As the uh, uh, delete by query is very slow in years, so we just uh, leave the delete data to when the common index is bad. And uh, when the, uh, see this is how we do in the, in the co common index project data. If the project data is in dedicated index, then we just uh, remove the index and uh, then update the metadata. Okay, this is uh, what we wanted to share. Thank you. Does anyone Any have a question? Questions? Thanks very much for uh, the presentation. That was uh, really nice to see how you scaled to this uh, amount of documents and um, Thank you. scaled. Um, many questions, but uh, one of the last ones that uh, occurred to me, it, um, it, re it, it revolves around how you decide which uh, index uh, you're going to use. So if it's going to be a big project or a small project. And uh, you said in order to make that decision, then you look at uh, seven days of data but that doesn't that mean that you've already made a decision and then you run the project to run for seven days and then you make another decision? Am I, am I understanding that correctly? Mm. Yeah, right. So Every you start day. with a small index? Yes. Ah, I see, okay. And then you run, uh, you run it for seven you days and then you make a decision, okay, now we need to upgrade it to... Uh, Ruby. Okay, yeah. Yeah. all right. Yeah. And my second question was uh, with regards to uh, the shard size threshold. What is that? Can you say a few more words on that? 
And currently, we just set it according to our experience. For example, in our big, most big instance, we just set it to 20 gigabytes. Gigabytes. Yeah. Okay. 20. Mm. yeah. Actually, it very depends on some application and some machine's power. Actually, yeah. you need to some test yeah. about it. Actually, there is some document about uh, in some yeah. research about. Okay, so there is some sort of a test that you can run in order to figure out what is the optimal size for the shards for the application. Yeah, actually, we need to improve that part. Currently, we just specify yeah. some base uh, threshold. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.